Evening, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here doing our last webcast for 2013. Anyway, so this evening, I thought to myself, last webcast for the year, and something I've spent a lot of 2013 talking about is the perfect trade. And it's something which I started doing after a, a horror trade that I had uh, back in March of 2011, so some two and a half years ago. And I thought to myself, let, let's see if we can't take this perfect trade a little bit further. Certainly for me personally, it, it's made a massive difference to my trading. It, it really has made a massive difference to my trading um, in terms of almost in a sense forcing that discipline on me. And initially not so much, but I'll, I'll talk through that as, as we go through uh, the presentation. Probably fairly short, 15, 20 minutes, uh, and then of course time for questions thereafter. So what is the idea? The idea is we mark every trade. We, we basically have a, a score sheet. And every time we do a trade, we, we mark ourselves out of, in my case, seven. And what I'm aiming to do is get seven out of seven for every trade. 100% per trade I do. And then the challenge to everyone out there is, well, why not a perfect year of trading? But that's a big step. So, so Let's not jump into that just yet. An important point I want to make, when I'm marking myself, the seven points, and I'll come to them in a couple of slides, that I use to mark my trades, to, in essence, score myself, profit or loss has got nothing to do with it. For a very, very simple reason, it's the one area of a trade I cannot control. I can control waiting for confirmation. I can control position size. I can control putting the stop loss in correctly. I can control monitoring the trade, exiting correctly. That's all I can control. But a tra trading is a random disbursement of winners and losers. And let's say, for example, you've got a 60% win ratio. Out of every six trade, out of every 10 trades, six are winners, four are losers. That's just how it works. There's no such thing as making money in every single trade. And which of those are winners and losers in a perfect world are beyond our scope. Now, sometimes it's because we make mistakes. But let's say we're trading perfectly. Then those winners and losers are randomly dispersed and we have got no control over them. So at no stage is a perfect trade worried about profit or the loss because we cannot control it. The analogy I use, if you go to work tomorrow and your boss says, okay, cool, your bonus for next year is going to be determined on how well the Sharks rugby team does. Now, your immediate response is, the Sharks, brilliant rugby team. Then you think for a moment and you say, but hang on a second, that, that's not quite fair. Because you've been measured on something you have no control on. And that's the point. If, you, if you're measuring yourself on profit or loss, you've got no control over that. So you're measuring yourself in an area that you have no control, and that's just going to mess with your head. Point being is, if we're trading perfectly and we have a working system, well, ultimately, money is what we're going to generate. We will make profit. We will do well in terms of money. But don't use that as your yardstick. I always say, money from trading is a byproduct of success, a byproduct of good, disciplined trading. So the perfect trade is the process is to mark them, to aim to get 100%. For me, 7 out of 7 for every trade. It's important. For me, it helps discipline. It helps me focus. And, and, and I want to touch on those two points because it's critically important. So I am currently, and I should have checked the number, but, but I didn't before I came on for the webcast. I think I am on perfect trade number 89. 89. Understand the power that has to force me to be perfect. I, I would do almost anything to avoid an unperfect trade because why? I go back to zero. Use a cricket analogy. You know, you, 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 you start getting the runs. The last thing you want to do is go out because, well, that's it. The last thing I want to do is have an unperfect trade because then I go back to zero and I start again. So it, 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 it forces that discipline on me. 
it, it, you know, for example, this afternoon, I'm in a trading Aussie future. I'm pretty certain I'm going to get stopped out at five o'clock. Um, but I'm, I'm having just a crazy day. I'm just having a crazy afternoon. There's storms all over Joburg. I'm going here, there, and everywhere to buy this and do that. And, 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 and five o'clock comes, and I'm in my car, and I haven't got my, my, my Bluetooth earpiece. And so I need to, and it's like my first, you know what, Alexa tomorrow, it'll only cost me a little bit of money. And you know what, maybe we'll get a bounce in the morning and then it'll actually save me some money. And then my mind says, yeah, but you go back to the beginning. Now, that's taking it the wrong way around. What we should really be focusing on is that desire for the perfect trade. And importantly, one at a time. Don't try and do, don't, don't sit here this evening and say, I know, let's do 100 perfect trades. Nonsense for two reasons. Firstly, well, what happens when you get to 100? What, your 101st trade isn't perfect? The bigger problem is we look at 100 perfect trades and it scares the heck out of us. We are much better off if we say, I know what we'll do. We'll do one perfect trade. Having done one perfect trade, well, what's the next step? Two. And then three. Well, it also helps, certainly for me, helps me focus on what is important. In other words, what I can control. In other words, the waiting for the entries, the setting the position size, setting and monitoring stop loss, exiting accordingly. I always exit on stop. So it, it, it's really helped that focus. Whereas, you know, in years gone by, let's be honest, we can't help but look at that profit or loss. Now all of a sudden it's a case of it's not about that profit or loss, it's about perfect trades every single time. So what do we need to do? We need to decide on what makes your trade perfect. And it's going to be different for everyone. Next slide, I'll show you mine. Mine's a fairly generic, so you can perfectly use it in the example. You might want to be more specific. You might want to have different lists for every, every, every uh, system that you do. And then in essence, as you do a trade, you mark off the trade against that list. And you keep a score sheet. I find Excel to be brilliantly easy. So what I have on the left-hand side is I list the, the seven points and on the running across the top, I just list the date, uh, the, the, the trade that it is, and do I do And then I put a, a, a one in each of the blocks below that I do correctly. Tally it up, and what I'm looking for is seven. If my scores are seven, I'm doing perfect trades. What that list is is perhaps less important. Maybe I'm wrong there, and I'll come to why in a moment. But what that list is is less important. What is it forcing us to do? It's forcing us to review every single trade we do, something we should do but probably don't do as much. And again, if I go back to the sports analogy, there's no professional sports person out there who, at the end of a sporting event, whatever it might be, doesn't review that sporting event. You know, you play a game of cricket, a game of rugby, a round of golf, whatever it is. As a professional, you review it. As traders, we're professional traders. At the end of the trade, we need to review that trade. I always talk about keeping a journal. And what I've found is this is an easy way for me to keep the journal. It's a lot less detailed. It's a lot simpler to do. So it's serving two purposes for me. And then, I, as I said, keep it in Excel, run with it, and and and, and just let it go and see how well we do in that case. So here is my list of seven. First question, did I get the signal? In other words, did I wait? And then I always have a two-step. So for example, if I get a buy signal tonight, I will have a confirmation, the trigger and then the confirmation. And, and I've always used that two-step process to get into a trade. You might not. But so I wait for the signal and then the confirmation. What that does is it stops me getting in early. It also stops me getting in late or not at all. Because we know what happens. We think a trade is coming. So what do we do? We think, well, it's going to confirm. But if I wait, I'm going to pay a higher price. So what am I going to do? I'm going to jump in early. Ah, I'm going to get a cheap, clever me. Problem. It might not confirm. It might not actually happen. Or you get the trade, and then you're worried. You're worried. There are a million things to worry about. You worry about losing money. You're worried about being wrong. You, you're worried, and so you're not entering. You've got the signal. You've got the confirmation. Everything says, bye. And you're saying to yourself, ah, oh, but, and then you don't. And then it, 
starts to run and then well and then it's run away from you so did you get the signal enter on confirmation was the position size correct that is two percent rule head to just one lap.com and go and dig around for two percent rule we did a video a couple of weeks ago on that in other words position size ultimately is your risk and was determined from your entry and your stop loss point four was stop loss set as per system? Now, I'm typically using 15 EMAs, uh, maybe 30 EMAs. I might be using lower lows. But did I use the system to determine the stop loss? And that's frankly an easy one. That's probably a rule we seldom break. Was the trade monitored correctly? My style of trading is that I, I typically only have to worry about them at end of day or in some cases end of week. And that doesn't mean that if you're end of day, you can't look at it during the course of the day. But my system says that I need to check an open position on my lazy Aussie every day at the close and on my lazy other indices every week at the close. Did I monitor that? Did I adjust the stop loss accordingly? And I keep a, a, a calendar entry in my calendar because then the beauty of that is I update it onto my Google Calendar and then it's on all my computers, my phone. Uh, heck, even my wife can access it because she's got access to my calendar. So did it adjust it accordingly, correctly and did I update that Google entry? And then the last question, did I exit as per the system rules? Now, I don't exit on targets. As a rule, I exit at stop loss. There are exceptions uh, on my lazy Aussie. I will sell a third at between 1,500 and 2,000 points, and I'll sell another third between three and 4,000 points, and let the last third stop me out. Quick point, why 1,500 or 2,000? If we move quickly to the 1,500, 2,000, I'll exit at 2,000 my first lot. If we move slowly, like two weeks, then I'll exit at 1,500 because I don't have massive strength behind it. So those are my seven points. Stuck them in an Excel spreadsheet. And the question is, at the end of every trade, I want to be able to tick every single one. So I get booted out of a trade today. I only entered, uh, when did I enter? I entered Monday at close. So did I get signal? Yes. I got it on Friday's close. Did I enter on confirmation? Yes. Confirmed the trade, closed Monday, entered Aussie futures. Was position size correct? Yes, it was. I determined my stop loss as per the system. 15-day EMA on the top 40, and that was my stop loss, and from that, I determined my position size. Was the trade monitored? Well, it was, but there wasn't a heck lot of monitoring because, well, it only lasted two days, but yes, I did. Did I adjust the stop loss correctly? Yes, I did. It did get slightly ratcheted up on last night's close, and then did I exit as per the system? I did, because this evening at 5 o'clock, top 40 closed below stop loss, I exited. So for me, perfect trade. I haven't updated my Excel. As I said, I, that's why I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's my 89th perfect trade. Taking me two and a half years. It didn't happen in a hurry. But two and a half years down the line, I've now done 89 perfect trades. My target, 88. Why do I say, sorry, 90, one above. Why do I only up my target by one? Because if I say my target is 90 or 120 or 130 or 200, what happens? It's so hard and so long to get that gratification. Let's say when I started two and a half years ago, I said my target was 100 perfect trades. It's going to take me three, three and a half years to get to 100 perfect trades. Where's my feedback? Where's my instant gratification that we love as human beings? There's nothing. So what I do when I started, my target was one perfect trade. And then I did it. Then my target became, well, okay, let's do one more. Make it two in a row. And then one more, three in a row. And then obviously if I stumble and I don't get a seven out of seven, I go back to zero. But my target, if I've done 89 perfect trades, my target is 90. And having done the 90 per, 90th perfect trade, my target will become 91. So small steps, in the, that, that's incredibly important. I know we look at the big numbers. When you start this, you're going to think, oh, I want to get to 100, but 10. But, but the small steps give me feedback. There's a 
there's a sense of accomplishment. I, I did a trade today. It actually cost me money. Uh, I, I offhand, I can't remember. Uh, probably, probably a couple of thousand points. But you get that satisfaction from a perfect trade. I, I kind of like pat myself on the back. Hey, perfect trade. So it forces me into doing it because I don't want to stumble and go back to zero. And further to that, it gives me that feedback. It gives me that, that sense of, yeah, I did it. So then here's my idea, and we'll see how this works. Trading is lonely. We, we trade by ourselves. We often find that our partners and, and spouses, friends, colleagues don't understand our trading. Aren't, they might be happy to listen to the war stories, but really they're happy to listen to the war stories. They're not massively interested in it. So I thought, well, okay, there's, there's, there's chat forums, there's Twitter, there's, there's Facebooks and the like where we, can, where we can kind of get a sense of community. And I thought, let's try and get this as a sense of community going forward for perfect trades. And what do I mean by that? We use Twitter. And if you haven't got a Twitter account, open one up. Twitter's better than, than, than the other social medias, than the other chat forums, because we can do hashtags. We can do hashtag perfect trade. And every time you do a perfect trade, go onto Twitter and just say, hey, I did hashtag perfect trade. I've, I've been monitoring that uh, hashtag for a while. There are one or two other people who use it every so often, about once a week. But if enough of us start to use it, we will chase everybody else away. And what we get there is we're going to get more feedback. I do a perfect trade. I go to my wife. I say, hey, honey, I did a perfect trade. She's like, nah. It doesn't resonate with her. We can become our own kind of uh, cheerleading in a sense. You hashtag perfect trade. I promise I will reply and say congrats. And if you don't do a perfect trade, don't worry about it. Don't hashtag not a perfect trade. Tell us about the good things. Tell us about when you did do perfect trade. If you want, throw a number in. But if we can get, we've got 70 or 80 people in the webcast this evening. The video will probably get 1,000 or 2,000 downloads by mid-Jan when sort of everyone's back in trading again. If we can get a core of people every time they do a perfect trade, we're going to have a stream there of, of, of perfect trade hashtags coming through. And more than that, we're going to get a, a strong sense of, of feedback, of positive feedback coming at us. Almost in a sense that, you know, you do something at work and someone says, well done, we're going to get that. It's about affirmation. We're human beings. We, we want the affirmation. We want the, the pat on the back. This is perfect pat, pat on the back. And of course, when you hashtag perfect trade, I'm going to reply back and say, congrats, do us another one. So... It almost brings that extra sense of, 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 of pushing us into it in a way, if that makes sense. Question coming from Duncan. Uh, do I only trade Aussie, for, uh, Aussie futures? Uh, Duncan, I trade indices only. I trade Indy, Resi, Finney, and Midcap on one system, Aussie on another. Head to just one lap and go have a look at for my lazy trading systems, um, and you'll find them there in all the details of the systems that I use. Whatever system you use, whether you're doing on a 15-minute chart or on a monthly chart, let's do those perfect trades. Let's start flooding our Twitter with our perfect trades. And I think it's something that if it works, and there's a lot of ifs, but if it can work, I think it can become, it can become powerful. It can become very, very strong for, for us as individuals, for us as traders, getting affirmation back, uh, uh, building community, building friendships over something as, I don't want to say as trivial, but as something as, you know, in the big picture, something as small as, as just a perfect trade. So really, the target, to do one perfect trade, and then two, and then three, four, five, and so it goes on. Start 2014, and has have as, as one of your trading goals, and, and, and you may have others, have as your trading goal for 2014 is to make a perfect trade, and then another, and another, until by the end of 2014, you've got a year of perfect trading. You do a year of perfect trading, 
you're going to make a profit. That's absolutely guaranteed. So here's a, a point that, that, that comes up. What happens if you're just struggling to get perfect trades, just not making it work? You're getting six out of seven, four out of seven, two out of seven, five out of seven, whatever the case may be, you're just not getting seven out of seven. You're not getting the 100%. What you now have is, well, firstly, you've got a record. What is it that's failing? Is there one that always seems to fail? Is it your stop loss? Is it your position size? Is it confirmation? Is there a particular one or two of your list that keep on failing? Now you know where your weakness is. That weakness may be you, but to be honest, it might be a weakness in the system at the same time. Maybe your system needs a tweak. So in truth, if we are not getting perfect trades, we can use that as well. We can, in a sense, use that lack of perfect trades to move us forward and to help us. Because why? We're keeping records. And we can go back to our records and see what's failing, what isn't working. If it's just random, sometimes it's this one, sometimes it's that one, other times it's another one, well, then your problem is consistency. It's about discipline. And heck, there's ways to deal with that as well. But if it's stop loss, if it's money management, if it's entry, well, then you know where to target. You know where to target your focus to make sure it works. Recap, as I said, it's not about profit or loss. A perfect trade is not profit. It's not loss. It's about the discipline. Right thing, right time, right reason every single time. Discipline of the mind, consistency of action. If you've heard me present on trading psychology before, you've most definitely heard me make that phrase before. The profit or loss will flow. I, I, I'm you know, end of the year and stuff, although I run tax years, at this point I take uh, uh, the money out of my account, trading account, uh, some of it goes into my long-term trading, uh, investing account, some goes to buy toys, I bought a quadcopter, crashed it on the first flight, no surprises there, um, in fact crashed it quite badly, fortunately it came with spare rotors, um, and then some of the money stays in the account, and I can tell you I've had a, a good year. Um, in terms of profit. Uh, last year was, was good as well, but that profit and loss is going to ebb and flow. The important point is, if I'm trading perfectly, the profit will flow ultimately. And then tweet your perfect trade. And you don't have to tweet the details. I mean, it's up to you how much detail you put in. You can just hashtag perfect trade. I've got a search function on it. I'll keep an eye on it. I use uh, most of the Twitter uh, platforms will enable you to, to search on a particular hashtag. You can tweet details. You can tell us exactly what it was. You can give us details of profit or loss. You can give us details of whatever. I and mean, that's your call. Twitter is an open platform. But let's tweet that perfect trade. Let's get that, that community going. Let's get, let's get support for each other for those perfect trades, that, that pat on the back, that affirmation, that, that, that congrats, well done, do me one more. Because that's always going to be my answer. Congrats, well done, do me one more. And it's not so much doing it for me. It's doing it for you. Do you one more, I suppose, would be the better phrase. If you have any questions, drop them in. That certainly is our challenge for next year. We've got a, a couple coming through. Uh, Connie's asking if I do mentorship, third year student at Tux. Connie, I, I don't because of times and the like, but what we are starting in the new year, and we will launch it uh, fourth week of January, is a learnership program, which is kind of mentoring, uh, but with a few not nuances to it. Um, short answer what it's going to be, we'll start with a learnership program in trading, and it will be probably a 10-week program to get people to, to, to fast track their trading from absolute novice to, to at least intermediate. Um, Tim Beck is asking, can I transfer ETS from a broker to OST? Uh, you can, there will be costs, but those costs will be relatively small. Um, Andre, yeah, and what we're gonna do, people are saying, is there gonna be a cost? There probably will be, but the cost will be negligible, but the first uh, uh, one or two or three that we run um, will be uh, free because you will be, to be perfectly honest, my guinea pig. Uh, will we be doing an investing one? Yes, we will be doing an investing one as well. Um, maybe with Keith McLachlan, 
chatted loosely with him. He's interested. Uh, but first, we'll get the trading one, and then we'll launch the next one in the series. Can you send me your perfect trade list for me to have a gander at? Uh, sure. Uh, Simon at justonelap.com or just go to justonelap.com and look for the contact screen. Uh, send me your perfect trade list, what you want to measure yourself on, and I will have a comment. I can tell you now, I'm almost certainly not going to say it's bad, unless it's really bad. I'm going to say it works. That's what's important. Does it work? That is critically important. Question about different systems. It's a good question. So, and maybe I'm getting it wrong. Uh, Helena, if I am, throw the question back at me. So, my systems are all so suitably similar to each other. My momentum is different, but that system runs over the course of a year. That, that I can use the same uh, 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 methodologies, the same list for each one. The momentum one is slightly different. There's no trigger confirmation. There's just trigger by those shares. So confirmation gets booted out. Um, the monitoring, well, there's no monitoring of it. I exit at the end of the year. So I have got a, a specific one for, for the momentum one. But yeah, you might have different lists for your different systems. Folks, not seeing any more questions coming through. There is one there, but that's just a, a, a thank you. Uh, ladies and gents, we will leave it there. This is, as I said, our last webcast for the year. A uh, couple of quick housekeeping as we leave. A huge thank you to to everyone who's, who's uh, 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 supported us during the year, whether that be just signing up supports us, attending webcasts, asking questions, downloading videos, telling your friends, loved ones, and enemies about the website. We massively appreciate it. We absolutely do. Uh, if you can spare us a few minutes, uh, on, do, do, a, do our, 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 our user survey. Uh, it will be in the newsletter link that we sent out on Monday and again on the Monday coming up. Uh, and we will be back on 13 Jan. So... Aside from a, a huge thank you because we're having huge fun and Just One Lap is working beyond our dreams, which is always a, a humbling thing for it to happen. But uh, have absolutely grand holidays, and I hope your every wish for 2014 comes true. All the best, grand holidays, and uh, for 2014, perfect trades. Cheers. <laughs>